let's discuss how women have been faring throughout this pandemic. I want to bring on C. Nicole Mason, president and CEO of the Institute for Women's Policy Research, to chat about this. C. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us today. I know that we're seeing unemployment levels drop among women, which typically I think is something that we would all really kind of cheer about. Uh, but you guys are saying that this is actually a, a sign of a deeper problem. Uh, can you highlight what that is? So women have been hit hardest since the start of the pandemic in February. We've lost, women have lost more than 2 million jobs and more than more, more than a million women have been employed, unemployed for 26 weeks or more. So women, although we have seen some employment gains over the last couple of months, they're still, we're still not back to where we were pre-pandemic. And when we add in uh, caretaking responsibilities and some of the other challenges of women in the workforce right now, it could be a long time before we reach pre-pandemic employment levels for women. What do you see as really, and you're kind of hinting on it here, the long-term impact that this is going to have, not just on, you know, women who both have careers and are also moms, but on their families, because we frequently see that moms will go out there and they'll hold it down when it comes to their, their jobs and, and hold it down in the workplace. But then they'll also come home and they have a second job, which is to be the mother and, and the caretaker of the home. So what do you really see as the impact being in 2021, 2022, perhaps even a decade of from now for families because of this impact on women? So you're absolutely right. Women are, including myself, are doing double double duty right now. So we are holding down our full time jobs, but also responsible for virtual learning because uh, schools across the country still remain closed, and so do daycares. So when we think about the tough choices that women have had to make, some women, more than uh, 800,000, have left the labor market or workforce because of this uh, demand or dual responsibility as caretakers and also um, some women are primary bread earners or breadwinners in their family. When I think long term about the impact, especially uh, for those women who have been hardest hit, women in the service sector earning $40,000 or less annually, they'll have a hard time recouping some of the losses and earnings that they, um, you know, as a result of the pandemic, and it might take them a, a longer time to, um, you know, enter the pay where they were earning before pandemic and to reach those same levels. So to that point, especially when you start talking about, you know, some of those women, at least in certain economic uh, brackets, I think a lot of, and this is something we've talked a lot about on this show, something like food insecurity um, mm -hmm. and insufficiencies there. How have you seen that play out throughout this pandemic, especially now, because Economic aid to families has long since run out. That twelve hundred dollars is has long been gone. It's long been spent. We we of course now have this new package, and I want to ask you about that in a minute. But what do you see as some of these really like these hardships that, that a lot of these women, these burdens that they've had to face and sometimes carry by themselves? So for many women before the pandemic, they were hanging on by a thread, many families, especially the ones that have been hit hardest during the pandemic. And the pandemic has only exacerbated their economic conditions and circumstances. So um, you've seen, and so have I, the, the food lines that have gone on for miles or stretched for miles and um, families facing eviction and, and housing insecurity. And it's really important to know that uh, women, many women, especially women of color, are the primary breadwinners in their families, meaning 40% or more of their income goes to the household. So when they lose income, uh, they lose their jobs, it has a direct impact on their family's um, economic uh, well-being. And so when I think about the stimulus package that just passed, I, I, it's really very disheartening because it is not enough to make sure that families are able to stay afloat. I mean, in fact, um, the, the stimulus checks or the economic impact payment was slashed by more than half. And many families um, from the time the first care package was passed until now have really been struggling to get by. What do you think that the new administration really needs to do or, or perhaps need to target and, and focus on to help women, to help moms going forward, especially as you're saying, 
that this aid package was was frankly disappointing. And as you mentioned, just as a reminder for everyone, there is going to be individual aid, but it's six hundred dollars, and that's half of what we saw the first time around. And I, I think folks are saying, "Hey, I need actually more money now than I." than I did before because I've been struggling now for several months throughout this pandemic. So so what then do you see as a, as a priority, at least from this new incoming administration? So I, I anticipate, and we all anticipate, that there will be a re- robust recovery package that will be, that come down the pipeline when the new administration is installed. And um, we, the in 2008, um, there was a similar recovery package. But we know what we know in this moment is that women have been disproportionately impacted by um, the layoffs and unemployment during the pandemic. So we're going to need to have targeted programs that include robust expenditures on child care. Um, and other kinds of social supports that fam- economic social and social supports that families will need in this moment. So um, you, expanding paid sick and medical leave is also going to be really important. Um, supplemental nutrition assistance program expanding uh, food benefits for families is going to be really critically important in this moment. Um, without schools opening and daycares opening, it's really going to be hard for women to re-enter the workforce. And so making sure that um, we have of economic impact payments that continue and persist throughout uh, this uh, COVID-fueled economic downturn. So, Nicole, I wanted to really, really quickly ask you uh, about this interesting plan. It's called the Marshall Plan for Moms, um, where moms would actually be able to receive a paycheck of about $2,400 a month. Uh, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on on an initiative like that. So, we actually... um, probably should be thinking about how we make sure that post-pandemic or even as we move towards recovery, start thinking innovatively and boldly about the kinds of supports that uh, women need. And economic impact payments um, like this $2,400 is being, that's being proposed is one of many ideas on the table. And just to be very clear, women contribute um, millions and millions and billions of dollars of unpaid labor each year. Um, and mm-hmm. if we were to account for that, uh, it would be at the, the, to the, that the amount of unpaid labor that women contribute to the economy yearly is astronomical. So what we're saying in this moment, if we say $2,400, we're saying that we value care, we value the unpaid work of um, often shouldered by women for taking care of their families and their children in this moment. And we also know that there's not going to be a one-for-one job recovery. So many of the jobs that were lost during the pandemic will not um, be back. So some women will not be able to reenter the workforce uh, for a lot of reasons. So And so we need to make sure that they have the economic supports they need to be able to take care of their families. All right. See, Nicole Mason, president and CEO of the Institute for Women's Policy Research. Thank you so much for joining us and breaking all of that down. Thank you for having me.